Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Super Snipers from Galen's Games. Super Sniper is a 1-2 to two player polyomino sniping game, which you're trying to hunt down and track down your opponent, and, and eventually kill them, just with a, with a polyomino bullet. This game is a prototype, all rules, components, all that stuff, subject to change, everything you see here, and I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. But Super Snipers, Super Snipers, like I said already, is a 1-2-2 to two player polyomino game in which you are placing polyominoes with the goal of finding your opponent and eventually tracking him down and taking that final shot. The game does have a solo mode as well, where you can go ahead and play against AI opponents, but I'm going to go ahead and teach you the uh, the, well, not teach, overview the, the two-player game in this experience. You're going to start the game off by hiding. You're going to start every round off by hiding because the goal is you have to hit your opponent multiple times, and so you're going to start by hiding in different zones. You're going to gather your cards, you're going to set them up, you're going to look at them, and you're going to choose where your target-located card is from these different locations, although your opponent won't really know. Other players want you to do the same on their side. Again, we have a target located and misses, and you're doing that on these three different zones over here, and from there you go into the locating phase. In the locating phase, you now have the setup, you have the board set up, and you're trying to track down your opponent utilizing polyomino tiles to, well, to establish whether that location is empty or not. To do that, players are going to go ahead and take turns flipping their ready and their go tiles as they slowly grab, and again, I'm just going to be simulating here because of one player game over here. You're grabbing, you're going to have a row of tiles from your, from your line of sight. Let's go ahead and put this on the line of sight. You can have your row of tiles, your polyomino tiles that you start placing down into your grid, and you're going to have to grab them left to right, moving through them, placing them down onto your opponent's grid, so you can basically target your opponent. So you're going to go ahead and grab one, you're going to possibly put this down, let's see, I'll go ahead and put this over, it's not good, it's not good, I'm going to put that over there, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put this over here, we cover that over there, so we're going to get a bonus, then I'm going to put these back, pull another one out from the bag, and then continue the process of trying to hunt it down, with the understanding that you always have to start from an edge unless you're chaining from a previous color, so I'll go ahead and put that down there like that, and that's fine, we get another tile out, and then I'll go ahead and put this one down like this, and now we have the center zone fully enclosed, which means that location is now triggered. What we're going to do there is we're going to go ahead and flip over the opponent's card at that location and see if it was or wasn't a hit or miss for this purpose of this. I'll just go ahead and shuffle it. And we got a target acquired. Target acquired over here. We got lucky on that first shot. We found our opponent, at which point we're now going to go ahead and gather their, the grid of that opponent and place it into our area. So that means we're going to look for this specific zone two, which is going to be this card over here. We've now found our target, and now it's time to actually go ahead and hunt down said target in our larger grid here. Meanwhile, our other opponent is still going through the process of trying to find us. They're still placing tiles. They're still in phase one, but we're now in the target phase where we are now trying to target them, which is the same core polyomino puzzle, but the difference is you may have earned some bonuses along the way, and additionally, you now have a larger grid. Over here, we have to go ahead and place things down on this grid, trying to make sure that we avoid any civilians in this grid, and we get the, the target, and we have to have them enclosed within the center red zone there. So again, same basic puzzle, we draw tiles out, we're going to go ahead and put things down over here. Let's try to go ahead and get something into the grid offhand. We have a bunch of, of, of white that we can probably utilize. We'll put that down like this. Again, flipping tiles as we go. We'll grab that white and try to enclose that. That looks like a good way to enclose it. We continue in the chain of white. We should be good to go over here. We now have a purple. Purple's gonna have to come in from the edge over here. We wanna be careful about isolating the civilians. We need to isolate the civilians from the primary target. So we're gonna go ahead and do that over here. Let's go ahead and pop this down here. That'll earn us a move at the same time. That's probably inefficient, actually. Let's just go ahead and do this like, I don't know. Let's, ah, let's go like this over here. Great, we're gonna go ahead and push this down. We're gonna pull another tile out. We're gonna go ahead and put this down over here, trying to slowly enclose the grid. I don't think this is working well, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's just go ahead and do it. Continuing the process, grabbing these tiles until eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to have the person encircled from the center. So if you go over here, that's now we have the innocent uh, isolated from the primary target, and we're trying to go ahead and get them still. Let's see, we got this over here. This we can finally put like here. And we have to be careful because we have to leave a large enough square for our bullet for when we finally go in for that kill. You have to make sure you have a large enough square to be able to put this down. But ta-da, we went ahead and we killed our target. But we didn't really kill them. They have multiple lives and we have to kill them in multiple locations. And so you're going to repeat the process until you kill them multiple more times. Although the upside is, once you've targeted your opponent, your opponent has a slightly a slight degree of catch-up mechanic because they have one less location to hunt through because you already hunt them down over there. Not so much a catch-up mechanic, so much just not being completely overkill over there. But that's basically Super Snipers. That's the core idea of what's going on here. A bunch of other things we didn't really touch upon. The fact that there's going to be players with their own abilities. There's going to be different options for characters in the game, each with their own abilities. There's going to be very various bonuses you're earning along the way for covering things up on these grids as well. You're going to be able to put slot them down onto these grids over here and utilize different bonuses at different timing in order to try to win the game in Super Snipers. 
is a solo mode as well, like I mentioned, and that is basically the game. Which brings us to the review, starting off with Ease of Play. This game is incredibly easy to dive into. It's a polyomino game with a few rules about how to chain colors, where to break those rules, what you can do, the process, of the, the, the process which is by this, a great reference card, by the way, this covers everything you need to know, but the general process of setting up the grid, the turn structure, you know, hiding, locating, targeting, and then clean up and starting again from the next. Uh, overall, quick and easy to play, and the game takes roughly half an hour to play through. Uh, it can vary, I'm sure, but roughly half an hour to play through. As far as what I like, don't like, and can is not liking, starting off the bat with what I like, which is the fact that this is a polyomino puzzle. I like polyomino puzzles, and this game is no exception. The game has that fun, rewarding aspect of trying to figure out how you're going to combine your polyominoes to accomplish what you need. These smaller grids are a little bit more simplistic, but still have a challenge of trying to figure out which bonuses to gather, and how quickly you can actually target and isolate a grid. And this larger grid gives you slightly more of a challenge, you have to figure out how to isolate innocence, how to encircle the center person, how to make sure to leave a large enough hole for your bullet, gathering the various bonuses along the way to get extra things you can do on your turn. It gives you a polyomino, and the fact that you have to chain colors, you always have to be connected to the edge of the grid, but you can chain your colors together. It gives you enough things to think about and think through as you go through what is otherwise a standard polyomino puzzle, with its own twist on it being turned into a sniper game. And the chaining tiles, the chaining of the polyominoes is a lot of fun as you figure out how, because you have to balance out the fact you always see your grid, you always see your line of sight early on, so you know what's coming, you know what's coming down the road, you know how you can plan for it, but the longer you take, the more inefficient you'll be, and so you're trying to think through how you can actually take the actions you need, plan around your polyominoes, and do so in the game, while factoring all the various rewards in the game, and all the extra incentives to go one place or another, or to do things differently in the experience, and of course, being mindful of your abilities at the same time. As far as what I don't like in the game, first of all, I don't love the resetting aspect in between turns. What I mean by that is when you eventually hit your opponent, and you knock them out, you kind of, the other opponent, whoever they are, they, may, they probably have the other grid already set up, they're closing in, they're knocking you off, but you, you entirely stop and reset the round once somebody lands a shot. You entirely stop. So I might be like a second behind you, but that second behind you versus being five minutes behind you makes no difference. At that point, you entirely reset the round and start from scratch as opposed to having a constant race the entire time, which is not the end of the world. It just it does mean, though, that you're taking a potentially small gap between players and making it artificially larger by forcing a complete reset every single time. Now, it is a variant, because I've already mentioned this to the designer. It is a variant that you don't have to do it that way, and you can continue playing. Thing, uh, but I don't like the default method, which is why it's a variant in the game. It's just the idea that once you're winning, it's fine, you're already winning. I don't need to insert a larger artificial gap to make sure that you're winning more. And secondly, I don't love the random nature of finding your opponent. The fact that you have this grid over here, the random nature of the fact that I just choose one, you choose one, you might find me quicker just because you randomly have to guess luckier. I, I don't love that in a game that's otherwise all about the tactical placement and the speed of, how, of thinking through what you can do and how you can do it. To have a, a one in three chance be lucky versus for one person versus the other just adds an extra degree of, again, potential imbalance through nothing, nothing, nothing other than just just sheer luck, uh, just sheer guesswork as far as what something ended up with. As far as what I can see others not liking, first of all, is I have a hard time, well, not I, you may have a hard time connecting this game theme-wise to the mechanics. The idea of a polyomino puzzle, which is really two snipers hunting each other down, is a bit of a stretch as far as the cell goes. I don't personally mind that because I am mechanics first over theme every time, and the fact that this is a sniper theme game but super snipers with the whole backstory about how they have implants and they're super trained but they also have multiple lives, the whole backstory to the nature of the sniper that you are, the super sniper that you are. I don't care. I see polyominoes. I like polyominoes. I'm all good. But I don't personally find that the theme heavily comes through. If that's something that's going to bother you, that's something that might bother you in the game. As far as final thoughts on Super Snipers. Overall, I enjoy this. This is another fun entry into the polyomino genre with a very, very interesting and different twist to the experience. One that rewards you for the, the strategic play you're going through while being a very interesting theme on top of it, but gives you a chance of hunting down your opponent, trying to plan around your moves, figuring out what you're going to do, then entering a larger grid, and again, going through the process, continuing that process of utilizing the bonuses you've earned along the way in order to most efficiently chain everything together, and then boom, target, lock, kill, execute it, all that. It is a good game. It's rewarding. It is not amazing, amazing, amazing. There's nothing that makes this like incredibly stand out, but it's another solid polyomino game in a polyomino in the polyomino genre. For me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. I like it. I enjoy it. It gives me fun things to do, and it does so while feeling very different than most other polyomino games out there. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Patchwork. If you're looking for a two-player polyomino game, Patchwork is the classic for a reason. And then secondly, if you're looking for another polyomino-ish game that also has a degree of, well, messing over your opponent by drawing on their grid, which is not what this game does, but 
thematically. Uh, cartographers. Cartographers will give you an opportunity to have your own little grid of polyominoes that you're placing, and then occasionally passing things around and drawing monsters in your polyomino grid as well. Again, an interesting implementation of polyominoes that thematically doesn't come through, but works mechanically. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.